Hi, welcome to another PhotoLink video. This one's going to be on uh, HDR um, imaging. It's high dynamic range imaging. Uh, working with the uh, PictureNot 3.0 controls prior to taking the image into uh, uh, GIMP. So what I'm going to do first of all is I can either select generate an HDRI, which stands for high dynamic range imaging, or right here with a control G. Okay. I can open up existing uh, high dynamic range image, um, but here I'm just going to instead of press or you know using this item, I'm going to come over here and press on this icon, and I'm going to add specific files uh, to my uh, uh, to my image set. So I'm going to take my normal, my one EV over, my two EV over my one EV under and my two EV under using the naming convention that I choose any name will work and now the exposure correction this means uh, correcting the exposures or, or, or matching the exposures in between these various levels ghost removal is when you deal with dynamic range differences between uh, these images uh, what it does is is it will eliminate any ghosting Image alignment, if you're shooting with handheld or if you're shooting off a tripod and you want to, you know, exactly have the images match, what you can do is uh, you click this button and it will match them both vertically and horizontally. Color balancing uh, does color correction in between the images. Now you can wait either to mid-emphasis or to standard. Now waiting to standard uh, gives equal treatment to all details in the image. Uh, Mid-emphasis will um, emphasize the mid-tones. Now we can either uh, do a linear, um, which uh, the uh, if we do a lim linear curve, uh, the camera curve will not be computed. It will just do a curve based on the images. Uh, the compute is uh, that will compute uh, the camera curve. Uh, we'll try to convert the camera curve either from the images or the XF data. And this will give you a standard 2.2 uh, curve. So what we'll do is let's just, um, we can just use the standard curve. And I'm going to say OK. OK. See, we forgot something. We have to go up here and set the bias on each one of these images. Like, see, this one's U2. So we're going to put negative 2 for two v UVs. EVs under, two EVs under. This is over one, so it's one uh, EV over, and this is two, um, which is two EVs over, and this is uh, underexposed one EV, so we put a minus one there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say OK. Now remember that EVs is um, an exposure value. It's a shortcut for using either an f-stop or a um, um, uh, you know, a shutter speed. Uh, each EV, if it's one EV higher, it's basically uh, twice the exposure. One EV lower is half the exposure. Um, so that's basically how that works. Well, anyways, this is working way. We're combining our images. Um, and what this does is this just takes a few seconds. It's taking all five images, extracting the detail out of each, uh, it's weighting the data towards more towards the midtones, even though we haven't selected midtones, to eliminate noise and detail exaggeration in the extreme highlights and shadows. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enlarge this. Now we can come up here to either fit screen or we can go to view and uh, we can say fit to view. So we have this. This is our HDR image. And remember, these are normally... Uh, kind of flat. Uh, what they are basically is they are um, um, they're they're an image that's showing all of the detail, and it's showing the detail correctly, but it is outside uh, the dynamic range of the monitor or the printer. That's why a um, an image, an HD image, H HDRI image, um, basically looks flat because it really can't be expressed correctly. So now we're going to come up here to our image and we're going to get into tone mapping. Tone mapping creates a, um, 
basically an LDRI image, which is low dynamic range image, which is capable of being correctly displayed on a monitor or a printer. Here what we've got is we've got a range of methods here. The first three methods are basically um, global contrast methods, if I'm not mistaken, and the last method is a local contrast method. Local contrast method is going to concentrate more on the midtones and less on the uh, total contrast of the image. I kind of like uh, this local contrast method. Now what I can do here is I can turn off my automatic loom, uh, luminance channel um, control, and I can come over to uh, here and make sure that I'm dealing in an 8-bit output format for GIMP. Now I can come over to my image and basically um, what I can do here is in my histogram, I'm sorry, is we're looking at the luminance channel. So what I can do is I can bring my white point over, okay, and I can bring my black point over to actually increase uh, the contrast. What I can also do, um, or, you know, get rid of the wasted space, I can also deal with the red, the green, and the blue uh, histograms independently. I'm sure you can figure those out so we won't go into them. Uh, what I can also do here is I can change my gamma. So if I decide that I want a little bit less gamma, uh, then I can go back into my histogram and I can make sure it matches. And then what I can do here is I can go into uh, uh, my exposure adjustment. I can either brighten it or darken it. Uh, I, can do, I can deal with my da dynamic compression which I can compress uh, the dynamic range of the actual image. I can increase saturation. And what I can also do is if I choose to, I can increase contrast or whatever I like to deal with. So basically, those are the controls. Now, if I say OK, uh, it presents me with the image, which is a nice image. We have detail in our grass. We have detail in the sky. Everything looks good. That has far more detail than a normal single exposure is going to give you. Now we can come up here, and I can save this image, and we can call it, uh, uh, we'll call it uh, YouTube.tif. And uh, basically that is... Uh, all there is to it, I can choose compression, um, you know, whatever I want to say my XF data. And uh, basically, um, what I've done here is I've gone through all the steps. So I've created that. Now, um, if you have images that you would like to work on, please send them to J-O-E-G at photolink, that's F-O-T-O-L-I-N-Q dot com, or uh, go to my website, which is... Uh, www.fotolinq.com and uh, see more, more tutorials there. And thank you very much for watching and have a good day.